This video will show you how to make the example environment Getting Started Grid 1. It has a single grid that allows you to make simple sentences about your holiday choices. There are two action cells that will allow you to either delete the last entry or to add a full stop and start a new paragraph. Before starting to make your environment, check that you're using the full toolbars. If that isn't showing here, click on Change to choose the full toolbars. Begin by clicking on Design an environment. This dialog allows you to choose the area in which you want to position your grids and any other objects. And these areas are called stages. The usual position is at the bottom of the screen, so choose that and click OK. You can make the stage larger or smaller by just dragging that top bar. For this example we want quite a large stage. To make a grid, click on the new grid icon which is at the centre of the top toolbar. Set the grid to have the number of columns 5 and the number of rows 3 and then click on Appearance and to change the line colour. In this case I'm choosing dark blue. I'm going to change the border width, that's the space between the cells. I'm making that 4 and I can change the line thickness if I wish. When you're ready, click Create and a small thumbnail of the grid is attached to your mouse pointer. Position that over the stage and click to drop it in position. You can resize the grid using the blue handles at the edge of the grid. And for this one I want to join the first two cells together to make one large one. So I select them both by holding down Control and then clicking on the Merge Cells icon, again on the centre of the top toolbar. And this has made me one large cell. You will notice on the right here a thumbnail has appeared of my grid. If I was going to make several grids, then more thumbnails would appear in this column. There are two modes when you are working in making an environment. Object mode which is the one that we're in now, allows you to do anything that you wish to the grid itself. It affects its position, its size, its appearance, and any actions and things that it performs. To add or change the content, you would use Edit Mode. And the modes are changed here by these two icons on the toolbar. Edit Objects, Object Mode, is this arrow, and Edit Text is the eye bar. So I'm going to click now on the Edit Text button and now when I come here I can click into a cell and start to write. I can click in each cell to add the content I want or I can click the Tab key to automatically move from one cell to the next. If I wish to change the symbols in a cell, I can click on the tabs at the top of this panel, which at the moment is showing the grids, and change the symbol browser. And in this cell, I want to remove the symbol for my because it's unnecessary. Having got the content in as I want, I now want to edit these two cells, the delete and return cells, to add those commands. Commands are added in object mode, so I change modes clicking on the arrow, or you can press the F2 key to toggle between the two modes. And you'll see in these cells I have three little icons. This little arrow indicates that the contents of that grid will be sent to the document when I use it. This little icon shows some links 
and would be highlighted if this grid was linked to another one. And this little square which relates to the actions attached to the cell. If I click in the square it brings up the cell actions dialog. On the right hand side it has a list of the current actions attached to that cell. And this one is to send the cell contents. So it sends what's in the cell to the document when it's selected. Now I don't want that so I'm going to click on this X to remove it. And what I want to do is to delete the last word. So I choose it, click Add, and that places it in the list and then I click OK. And now you can see in this cell there is a little blue spot in that square to indicate that there is an action present. And in this cell I'm going to similarly bring up the cell actions dialog and remove the send cell contents. This time I want to choose the command a new paragraph. And the new paragraph will send a sentence terminator and then a new line and finally capitalize the next letter. And that is exactly what I want to do. So I click add and I click OK and I have my command. The final thing to do is to make those two cells look different to help the user understand their purpose. So I can select the cell to highlight it and then I right click and I choose Edit Grid Appearance and this brings up the same dialog box that you saw before but you can see this time that only my selected cell is highlighted and I'm going to click on the background colour box here and choose the colour that I want and click OK and I'm going to do the same for the return right click edit grid appearance background and choose a different colour and click OK now that has made my grid and before testing it you should save your grid. So I can either go and click on the Save Environment icon or I can go to the File menu and choose Save Environment. Give your file a name and click Save. And now I can test my environment by clicking on the green Play icon. So it's sending the text as I expect. The delete is deleting the last entry. I click on the return cell, puts the full stop and puts the new paragraph ready. If I want to make any changes to my grid, then I can click back to the edit button and I can delete the text that in the document and make the changes that I want. And in fact what I would like is that when I send that return I would like to hear that sentence being spoken. So I'm going to go back to the actions attached to this to this cell and I'm going to add the command speak sentence and click add. Click on my save icon and test it again. On holiday I like to go swimming, sunbathe and go hiking. There is one small change I would like to make still. As I look at that grid, I can see that the font in these two cells is a little bit on the small side. So what I can do is going into object mode again, I can make some of these cells a different size. If I click on the gap between the cells, I get this little icon that I can now drag those cells and make them a bit smaller. So I can stretch my cells and that has allowed me to even up the sizing to make the whole grid look just that little bit neater. So finally save my environment again and that's done.
On the front screen you can see there is a link to help and tutorials and under here you will be able to link to a PDF version of this tutorial that you can follow yourself. The next tutorial, Getting Started with Grids 2, will take you further by showing how to make more than one grid and link them.